Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at how temperature affects solubility. This generally involves a lot of reading of graphs and we want to make sure that we're going to interpret the graphs correctly. Our objective is to determine if more solute can be dissolved in a given solution from its concentration, the solubility of the solute at various temperatures, and of course what the temperature actually is. This graph from your textbook shows how the solubility of various substances changes with temperature. The vertical axis of this graph is showing the solubility in water. The units that are used are a little bit weird. Uh, they are grams of solute per 100 grams of water. So this is meaning this is interpreted as if you were to take 100 grams of water and we're looking for how many grams of each one of these different solutes on the graph could dissolve in it. The horizontal axis is all about temperature and you'll notice for most of these solutes there's a pretty strong temperature dependence but then there are a few like NaCl that are very flat they hardly change at all. Most of these substances increase their solubility as their temperature increases, but some of them decrease. Now I'd like to sketch just one substance over here and see if we can make a connection between this graph and some of the vocabulary words from the previous video. So on the horizontal axis we have temperature, on the vertical axis we have solubility, and I'm just going to kind of sketch something like potassium nitrate because that has a significant um, effect as the temperature changes. So if we are looking at something at, at a point that is directly along this curve, that curve represents a saturated solution. So this curve represents the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve at any given temperature in the, under normal conditions. If we were to look instead at the area underneath the curve, so this area that I'm hatching in in blue, this area underneath the curve represents an unsaturated solution. So if you were asked to describe a solution that was made at a certain temperature that involved dissolving so many grams of solute in 100 grams of water, and you found that that point on the curve fell anywhere in this blue region, like where I'm drawing in this dot, then the solution would be considered unsaturated. So you have the blue down here, is unsaturated. And then the area above the curve, which let's see, let's do that one with orange. Uh, the area above the curve would represent a solution that is super saturated. However, super saturated solutions are really uncommon. And so chances are that won't really be what's going on. So for instance, if you were told that millimole attempted to make a solution by taking so many grams at a certain temperature and that point fell somewhere up here in this orange area, as long as she didn't heat it up to a higher temperature to trick everything into dissolving, what's actually going to happen if all of this is done at one temperature, is that only this much stuff will dissolve, whatever rep is represented down here up to that line uh, where we hit the saturated curve, and all of the rest of that amount, so the amount from the curve up to that point, would be undissolved solid that will probably just fall to the bottom of the container. 
So the solution that forms will be saturated, and it'll be saturated by taking this amount right here that I'm marking, um, and that amount of solid will actually dissolve, and then all of the rest of the solid will remain undissolved down at the bottom of the container. Solids and gases behave very differently in terms of their solubility as the temperature changes. If we are talking solids, well, let's see, solids are all of these substances that are over in this uh, graph on the left. So when we are talking solids, the temperature behavior is that for the most part, solubility increases as temperature increases. However, there are a few compounds, such as the cerium 3 sulfate, which is down here, which buck the trend, and the solubility actually decreases as the temperature increases. But those compounds are kind of rare. Generally speaking, if we are talking solids, the trend for solids for solubility versus temperature is that the solubility goes up. Now that's not 100%, but that is the overall trend. The second graph illustrates what happens with gases. And you'll notice with these gases, if we're to look at this plot of solubility versus temperature, they all go down. So for gases, we would expect the solubility of a gas to decrease as the temperature increases. This is one of the reasons that, say, sodas should be stored in a refrigerator, because once you open a soda the, uh, and that excess pressure of the gas is released, if the soda is cold, more of the carbon dioxide or the carbonation will stay dissolved in the, um, the soda at the lower temperature. Let's see if we can answer this question. Millimole added 40 grams of potassium nitrate to 100 grams of water at 20 degrees C. What does the resulting solution look like? All right, well, just to try to be able to mark up this graph a little bit better, let me kind of sketch out the potassium nitrate curve. And Let's see, we are working at 20 degrees C, which on the bottom graph is roughly here. And if we go up to the curve and read off how many grams that is for potassium nitrate at 20 degrees, we're looking at about 30 grams. So this is telling us that at 20 degrees, which is just ever so slightly less than room temperature, millimole should be able to get 30 grams to dissolve. But she didn't put 30 grams into her beaker, she put in 40. So if only 30 grams will dissolve, that means 10, to gram, 10 of those grams are undissolved and will just fall to the bottom of the beaker. So to kind of make a little sketch of what that will look like in her beaker. She's going to have a bunch of undissolved potassium nitrate down at the bottom. In fact, that'll be 10 grams of KNO3 as a solid. And then the solution above it will be a saturated aqueous potassium nitrate, and that will be 30 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water. Don't fall for it and say, oh, well, at 40 grams, we're up here, we're in the supersaturated region. In order to make this solution supersaturated, millimole would have had to trick it. So she would have had to heat the solution up uh, to a temperature that would be at least, oh, what are we looking at for 40 grams? For 40 grams, we're looking at a temperature 
that's almost 30 degrees. So she would have had to heat it at least to 30 degrees, get everything to dissolve up, and then cool back down to 20 degrees and be super careful with the solution so that she didn't induce crystallization. And so it, the, the problem doesn't say anything about tricking the solution. So 40 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees C means that we're going to end up with 30 grams dissolving and 10 grams falling to the bottom of the beaker. To wrap up this video, our objective was to look at how solubility is affected by temperature. We saw that solids and gases have different behavior. So if you have a solid, and we're looking at temperature on this axis and solubility on this axis, the general trend is to increase. There are some exceptions to that, but most solids have an increased solubility as the temperature increases. When it comes to gases, though, the effect is in the opposite direction, and all gases will decrease their solubility as the temperature increases. And remember on these graphs, the curve itself represents a saturated solution. Anything below the curve is an unsaturated solution, and any point above the curve probably has excess solid sitting down in the bottom of the beaker, and a saturated solution form.